What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to see more content like this. What content I hear you ask? Well, Tom Cruise is at it again. Does this guy ever sleep or eat or go to the toilet or do anything but make movies because he's making another one? <laughs> is he... Apparently he's going to make Oblivion 2, sequel to the 2013 movie Oblivion, which was directed by Joseph Kaczynski. Uh, and what we have here is an article from Giant Freak and Robot, so believe what you will. It starts off with exclusive. Tom Cruise is returning for Oblivion 2 and the plot is revealed. So, he may be ending his time as Ethan Hunt soon, but apparently his time as the clone of astronaut Jack Harper is just beginning. Yeah, he's in. He's Ethan Hunt is coming to an end uh, next year, I think. We've got Dead Reckoning coming up, and it's going to be split into two parts. The first part is undergoing a bit of an edit as we speak because apparently it's too long. The last instalment, Fallout, was 147 minutes long, and this one apparently is even longer, so it's kicking on for three hours. So they've got a bit of work to do there. I don't mind, I can't get enough of Ethan and the gang, so I can leave it as long as I want. But that's going to end next year. He's got another project where he's going to go, actually go into space, because he's mad. Uh, and then we've got this one here. And what it says is, trusted and proven sources tell us that Tom Cruise has signed on to return in Oblivion 2 with Universal Studios and Joseph Kaczynski, who directed the original film, as well as last year's runaway hit Top Gun Maverick, See, I think that's going to give it a little bit of pep. I think the fact that Kaczynski directed Maverick last year and it ran away with a billion dollars probably going to attract more eyes and attention than what a than what just say a sequel out of the blue would with some other director. He's going to he's going to also return to direct the sequel. This is set 15 years after the original. Oblivion 2 will see Jack, Julia and their daughter fighting the alien AI Tet, which has since repaired itself and is ready to conquer the Earth. We don't know if Kaczynski will be looking to recruit other actors from the first film, but considering what we know of the plot, it seems likely there will at least be discussions about bringing back Olga Kurilenko to join Tom Cruise. Kirilenko played Julia in the first film, a revived astronaut who helps Jack defeat Tet. She's since earned a long list of impressive credits. Well, I wouldn't go that far. She's starred in a lot of B-movies. No disrespect to the girl. I mean, she works her socks off, but she's not exactly uh, prime time. Including playing the traumatised assassin Taskmaster in 2021's Black Widow. A role she'll be reprising in the upcoming Marvel ensemble film Thunderbolts. Uh, how exciting. Can wait. Uh, Tom Cruise's own daughter Suri, who played his daughter in Oblivion, but whether or not she'd return for Oblivion 2 is anyone's guess. In Oblivion, the malevolent AI Tet takes on the human form of Sally, the director of the NASA mission that Julia and the original Jack Harbour were a part of. With a villain known for having that capability and tendency, it opens the door for pretty much any of the actors from the first movie to join Tom Cruise in Oblivion 2, whether or not their characters survived. That includes Sally, who was played by Melissa Leo who starred in The Fighter, which she won Best Sport and Atlas for 2010. And the leader of the scavengers, Malcolm Beach, was played by Morgan Freeman, who was also an Oscar winner. Million Dollar Baby, Best Support and Actor, who was in Seven and everything else that starred Morgan Freeman. Now, Andrea Riseborough, who's been in a few movies. She's a local lass. She was uh, born and raised and grew up. I think she grew up in Whitley Bay, which is about half an hour, 40 minutes away from where I live, up on the coast. She 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 got a nomination for Best Actress this year, but it was surrounded by controversy. Because, I say, I didn't know this because I don't really follow the Oscars because I'm not really interested in millionaires patting themselves on the back for being millionaires. It's all a bit underhanded as far as I'm concerned. But she, she was in the running for Best Actress, and it was surrounded by a little bit of controversy because the the way that he, they campaigned to have the movie voted for was a little bit underhanded according to the the academy. But things got sorted out, and she she got she got nominated. It was oh, what was it called? It was a low budget movie called Two Leslie. Anyway, she played. It says there she played one of the astronauts as well as her clones. Yeah, she played Tom Cruise's kind of. A pretend wife in the movie 
The Skeptical Sykes, played by Nikolai Costa Waldo, everybody knows who he is, Game of Thrones, Jamie Lannister. Uh, Zoe Bell was a scavenger called Cara. There's a lot of impressive talent there, including two Oscar winners and one nominee. Rounds itself off with Oblivion wasn't particularly well received by critics. No, they said it was um, the plot was lackluster and predictable, which like I thought it was pretty decent. I watched, I think I watched half of it yesterday because I had other things to do. But it, it, I've seen it before a few times, and it looks really good. It's shot really well. It looks fantastic. The scenery, the cinematography is amazing. The performances aren't half bad. The pacing's pretty good. Uh, there's a little bit of mystery, but it, you know, it's nothing we haven't seen before. It's like big corporation fools people. People find out what big corporations up to, and it's wrapped up in a science fiction world. If you haven't seen it, it's, it is worth a look. If you haven't seen it, I don't know what platform it's on at the minute, but it is worth, well worth a look. It certainly turned a profit. It made 286 million against 120 million budget, but. Like, it didn't really make that much. If you take 120 million budget and then you double that for all the promotions and, and adverts and um, <clears throat> marketing, as they're called, so you're looking at what, 240, 250 million? It didn't make a great deal, but it wasn't exactly a bomb or a flop. As it says here, it didn't exactly set the world on fire, but considering Joseph Kaczynski and Tom Cruise were behind one of only three movies last year to crack a billion dollars. It isn't a mystery why Universal would greenlight Oblivion 2, or probably any other project the two went went to them with. <laughs> He's just on fire, isn't he, Tom Cruise? He's like, how many films has he done now? About 900, and it just gets better with age. He's like a fine wine. Yes, I am interested in Oblivion 2. I think it'll be good. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. It's going to have to be something different and something new, and... They'll probably up the ante as far as action is concerned, because that's what sells, just like Top Gun did with the, the, like the aerial stunts and the action and, and the drama and the, everything. It was amazing. So just let me know what you think in the comments down below as usual. Uh, that's all from me for the days. Just a little bit of a news flash for you. Are you going to go and see Mission Impossible 7 and 8 or part 1 and part 2? Let me know in the comments section down below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and Goodbye.